What's up all you movie lover badasses out there? Fat Samurai Guy here with Lady Fat Blood. Today we're going to review Hitman Agent 47. Here's a quick plot synopsis. Once again, unable to tell a simple story based on a popular video game property, Hollywood mucks it up in Hitman, not Agent 47's movie. The enigmatic and fascinating Agent 47 takes a backseat to an uninteresting and annoying woman who is searching for her father. Throwing in a genetically enhanced bullshit plot point, the woman displays mutant-like psychic abilities while Agent 47 now follows his prey like Jason Voorhees. They both must team up to fight against cartoon stock villain number 13 who wants to reinstate the Agent program even though his physical enhancement makes the both of them completely inferior. It's Agent versus kind of but not Agent in Hitman. Hollywood does it again. Now we're gonna give you the good, we're gonna give you the bad, I'm gonna give you the badass. First up, the good. I would have to say that the lead actor who plays Agent 47 uh, did a decent job. He's not uh, charismatic, but then the character is not really supposed to be. <laughs> so he was fine, he definitely looked and played the part a lot better than uh, Timothy Oliphant from the last film. Even though he couldn't um, get his accents right. Yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> Like it's his first line, his first line in the movie. And his last. Yeah, you hear that British oh, come through. Yeah. And then the rest of the movie, I was just like, oh, what happened to the British? He was, he was fighting the hell out of that accent of his. Good try, but... They could have just left him British. I wouldn't have had a problem with it. It would have been fine. I have a good. Really? Yeah. I wasn't suckered into thinking this was going to be a good movie, so I wasn't really disappointed. And now for the bad. So, you remember uh, in our previous video that we've posted um, about the resurgence of video games, uh, films coming back? It's not going to happen, folks. <laughs> we were doing this. <laughs> Why? Why? Why can't they get this right? It's the second time now, Hollywood. Why can't you get it right? He's a badass hitman that kills people. Why? It's exciting in here. There's excitement. Yes. Why can't they get it right? <laughs> okay, so 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 what Sweetie Pie here is trying to say? It's a simple premise. It's a simple, very simple uh, concept, and yet Agent Forty Seven was barely in this movie. Hitman was barely in his own damn film. We were focused on this woman. Uh, we were given this ass load of exposition at the very beginning of the movie, which was I was kind of like, whoa, whoa, information, whoa, information overload. Okay. Are we in the movie yet? All right. So we're following this woman that the, once again, you know, everybody just, the, the, the filmmakers assume that you're gonna care about her just because she's there and she's searching for her daddy. So? So? Can I have my hitman, please? And it was, her, her story was just not, it was, just wasn't. Nothing was interesting in this movie. Nothing, the plot. Nothing was interesting. No. He was probably in the movie about 65%. That's unacceptable. That's unacceptable. That's like Lara Croft showing up and making a cameo in her own movie and passing the torch on to some other globetrotter and saying, well, I did my time, folks. I'm gone. I'll help you out later, though, in the finale or something. I don't know. The camera work and the sound effects in this movie, for some reason, we go to a pretty good theater. Loud sound effects, okay? Uh, but for some reason, it, it was quiet in this movie. It was just like, you know, he's shooting the guns. He doesn't even have a silencer on. And it's just like, who cares if he's got like 30 body count? I mean, when it's all, very bad sound mix. You know, and it just, it, it should have been exciting. It should have been just, bah, just, he just takes people out. Bah, 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 you know, when he fights and the camera work, it was all this shaky cam bullshit. Yeah. You can see stunt doubles. Uh, I could have sworn, I mean, if you, I could be wrong, correct me if I'm wrong, but I could have sworn there were two parts where they CG'd. Zachary Quinto's face, yeah, it, yeah, looked, they, it looked like it. it. It's totally CG'd on the face on the stunt and, double. Okay, <laughs> and what you have to keep in mind, a lot of movies, uh, have, a lot of movies have done that through necessity. However, uh, both of us had the same impression of this film. The first 10 minutes, this film looked very cheap. The oh, CG, ooh. the CG work, uh, because this movie is cheap and you can, you can, you have to make allowances for, for lower budget yeah. films, but this is a theatrical film. And for the CG to look as poor as it did and then, then make these efforts to do this CGing the face over the stunt doubles, it was very distracting. Uh, we had a lot of CG people. 
Uh, we had a lot bad of- CG. Bad CG in this movie. Bad CG cars. Uh, bad CG action enhancement. It just. It, it was not. It was not attractive. Who cares if you have this really cool action sequence when you get to the scene with the red car and they get in the red vehicle? Who cares if they're spinning around and doing stunts when they're hitting fucking bad CG uh, bikers and on the bikes? Who cares? It takes away everything. When it looks like shit, who cares what the stuntmen did in the car? When everything else around it looks like crap, who cares? Another thing, a huge pet peeve of mine with action sequences, quick cutting. Quick cutting, quick cutting in all the fights and it's just... Oh, oh, impact, edit. Oh, edit. edit. Oh, edit. Another edit. camera angle. Another camera. Stop doing that. I, I, not everyone can be Yuan Wu Ping and, and fight choreography and camera work from Hong Kong and, 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 and such. Show the fighting. We want to see the fighting. And if you can't do it, then don't, don't do it. because It's distracting. I know your average, average schmuck on the street probably doesn't care. So I guess who cares, right? Yeah. I guess it doesn't matter. <laughs> What am I complaining about? End of review! <laughs> <laughs> and like she was saying earlier, exactly right when the movie started, the first second, bam, the movie started, and it hit the screen, I immediately went, oh, here we go. Welcome back, cheap, low-budget video game movie <laughs> genre. Welcome back. I mean, I felt like I was watching the first Resident Evil movie again. Where was the excitement? Mm. Where was the excitement? There was one scene, it's not really a spoiler. These people are trying to escape into a car. And uh, Hitman, there's no way he's going to catch up to them. Okay, so they're way far. But Hitman climbs up and goes up the stairs and gets to the rooftop of this really tall building. Gets out the sniper rifle and shoots them. And I was just like, oh, this is awesome, man. We're going to have some awesome Go-Go 13 shit. You know, I was like, yeah, I like it. And he just did that to mark the person. That was all. But you see, it's okay. I can handle a lower budget. I can handle CG that didn't have the budget to pay for to make them look better. I can handle a bland, boring plot and characters that are not really that interesting. I can handle all of that. But if you give me exciting action sequences, that'll make up for all of that stuff. Because I'll be like, yeah, you know, the story was all right. Yeah, the character's okay. But yeah, man, that action sequences were fucking badass, right? I don't know what everybody else is seeing in this movie. Everybody else is like, the action sequences are the best I've seen, at least that's it. No, I was not yeah. impressed at all. I was not impressed at all. The action sequences were not bad. No. They were well done for the budget that they had. But they were not on John Wick level. I'm sorry, they were not on the rate level. They were not, there. they're not even close. And ironically, I heard that the people that did John Wick uh, shooting and action choreography did that for this film, which is, you know, I, I don't know what happened there. It's kind of a misstep. They're not bad. You will, you can enjoy them, but they're just not great. And if they were just, just balls to the wall, you know, edge of your seat, shooting, I mean, pull from elite equilibrium. I don't give a fuck. Do some gun or something. <laughs> Make it exciting. Be like, oh, that was fucking awesome. It's not a good sign when you have a gory R-rated movie feel like a PG-13 film. And that was that was an interesting point. This was an R-rated film. We had headshots, we had blood, and it was it was such a I don't I can't say it's a tame R because I feel I've seen no. tamer R films out there. But it really felt like it was it was a it was a PG-13 trying to posture as an R film. What I mean by that is they're trying to remind you that they're a rated R film. Every time they swore, every time they threw in an F-bomb or something, it was like, oh, we're R. <laughs> fuck, we're R. See, fuck, what the fuck are you doing? We're rated R. <laughs> and it was like, mm, Punisher Warzone, that's a good hard R. And yes, I B like- B-movie, yeah. Yes, I like Punisher Warzone, get over it. It's a good Grindhouse B-movie. It's a, yeah, it's mm -hmm. mindless, but it's, that's an R film. That's yeah. like, okay, we he got- He punched through somebody's head, <laughs> okay? Spinning around with machine gun Uzis, that's, you know, come on. If you're gonna be a low budget B-movie, at least give us some entertaining violence and action sequences. That's a perfect example right there. Yeah. Soundtrack was bland. They try oh, to give Marco. him. They try to give him. And Marco Beltrami's yeah. really he good. He was trying though. He yeah. was really trying to. He get tried there. to give him a theme. He but... was trying to make the action sequences. He was trying to throw in this exciting action of music in it. It was like, oh sweetie, it just, I'm yeah. sorry. It didn't. It didn't. Work. And now for the badass. You remember that scene in the trailer where they're in the red vehicle and they pull up in the middle of the street, and all these cables get shot. 
by mercenaries that stops them and they can't drive away. So Hitman pops out of the car and starts gun blazing all of them. You remember that scene from the trailer that they showed all the time? That's the best part of the movie, folks. And I remember when I watched that trailer, I was I, a small little voice said, that's going to be the best part of the film. And, and apparently it was. It was almost like that whole action sequence, okay, was almost like some other director came in and took over the film. It like elevated the movie a little bit. Even the movie, the camera work, looked better. The movie looked a little bit more expensive <laughs> by, that, by that point. And that, that scene where he just popped back up and was shooting dudes and taking them out like nothing. That's when I was like, this is what I was in. I was in the theater like this. You know, the whole movie. And then when I got to that scene, I did this. I went... <laughs> you notice, you notice I went... I, I didn't go... <laughs> okay. But yeah, that was pretty much it. Even the end action finale was just bland and stock with... You know, barely hard to hear sound effects, gunshots. I like the helicopter blade death. And now we have come to our spoilers section of the video. So if you don't want to hear any spoilers and you want to find out what rating we give this film, go ahead and forward to this time right here. Spoiler time. So the Terminator thing. They they set up all this exposition at the beginning of the film, uh, saying that this one guy helped create the agent program. And he realized that he he needed to withdraw from this because it was getting it was gonna get out of control, get into the wrong hands. You know they're gonna be used for evil. Bad, create blah, 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 create blah. an evil army. Whatever. Okay, it's typical. Fine. So he goes away. He disappears, and uh, they the government's like, oh hey, we want to re we want to redo this program because uh, it's it's a great investment. We can have these super soldiers. So they go chasing after him. Well, in the meantime, they've got. Zachary Quinto character. Spock. Who you find out his entire skeleton is laced with not antimantium, but an antimantium type of metal that makes him impervious to bullets. He gets shot in the chest Multiple at least times. like two to three times. More than that. And you see the blood and you think, oh he's dead. And you're like, yeah, I yeah. believe he's dead. Mm -hmm. And he suddenly comes back and you find out why he can he survived all of this. So they have created a, a, a man with internal armor. Why do you need these super soldier agents? You've already got another form of super soldier right there. You've mm -hmm. got a, a guy impervious to to bullets. Mm -hmm. Who cares if you've got these people who can do these... Uh... And apparently he was stronger than Agent 47. Every time they fought, he like beat shit out of them. And he was always trying to make the point where he was like, say it, say I'm better than yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. And it was just like... He never really figured out what that was yeah, all about. Yeah. And they're, the, the agents, Agent 47, and you find out that the, the girl who's looking for her dad, the woman, uh, she was genetically enhanced by her dad, who had to leave her because he, want, he thought it would be safer if she was, you know, on her own and away from him. And you find out that she was designated Agent 90. And they keep throwing it in your face that she's more superior. She is superior to Agent 47. Even 47 tells her, you're better than me. First of all, we don't want to hear that. We want to see a movie about Agent 47 doing Agent 47 stuff. We don't care about this other chick that's supposedly better. And they never really... The only thing that you can really see that she has over Agent 47 are these strange psychic-like abilities. Spider sense mixed with... It is very psychic. Uh, it does Jean not. Gray. It does not fit in with this at all. Damn! I just remember the terrible subplot. Don't you love? Don't you love? I can't believe you could just turn off the. Shut up! Bah! <laughs> Shut up! Shut up! Stop trying to humanize this nonsense. Wait! Oh my God! Anyway, so. So we, we've got That's what that. she was telling him. Yeah, because yeah. they kept saying it was so important that he has no emotion. Don't you have any emotions, Agent 47? So anyway, so you've got you've got the Terminator, you've got Jean Grey, <laughs> and the end of this movie. Holy shit, man. First of all, we they established at the beginning of the movie that after the scientist that created the agents goes away, the agent program is gone, and the agents fade out into nothing. They just fade off into the shadows. There's no more agent program. Yet Hitman himself, Agent 47, is a part of this 
unexplained program. Yeah, he's working for somebody. He's working for somebody. And I, to the movie's credit, they did have some scenes that were reminiscent of the games where you see him changing outfits to, yeah. to blend in. And that was, that was, that fun. was fun. He's on the phone with this, this woman, Agent 47. And that was, okay, that was reminiscent of the games. But who is this woman? What organization are they with? There are several agents, at least. We know of one that's involved in the end. The most bullshit ending in a movie I've seen in a really long time. So basically, he chooses not to... He's supposed to kill two people, okay? He's supposed to kill um, the female's dad. An Agent 90's... 90, right? Yeah. Agent An Agent 90. He was supposed to kill both of them. Well, now he's choosing to have emotion now. And uh, fuck the dad. The dad's old and he's the man. He's not hot. <laughs> so, but the chick... All right, I'll, I'll give it a pass. I don't have any emotion. You know, I'm just a, I'm just a Terminator killer, but I'll give her a pass. I have you know. an emotion <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> but... <laughs> So he leaves her alive, and uh, the organization that we don't know who he's working for, uh, I guess they have the ability to clone. No, we, we have to assume. We have to assume. Because about halfway through the movie, you see this phone call. You see the Asian making a phone call. She's an Asian lady that, that Agent 47 is talking to over the phone. She makes this phone call, and, and you see this agent who's just killed somebody uh, answer the phone. You don't, you don't see who he is, and then you see yeah. him walk out, and I'm like... Is that gonna go anywhere? Yeah, I know who was that, that wasn't I know that yeah. wasn't forty seven that she was talking to. And at the very end of the movie ho, 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 At the end of the movie He's killed he's killed who he's supposed to kill and he's let live who he was supposed to kill. And you see the doors open up. The elevator, because they're getting ready to get back on after killing everyone, and they're keep, getting back on the elevator. Keep in mind, this is what the character looks like throughout the entirety of the film. Now he looks close to Agent 47, he mm. has the outfit, but he has a slightly, he has stubble. He has this little yeah. side stuff going on mm -hmm. with his with his head. So open up the doors and here is an actual Agent 47 looking Agent 47, clean cut, completely looking exactly like this, who is the same actor. Yeah. And uh, he pulls his guns, they pull his guns. Credits! Credits. Fuck you. <laughs> and then they have the balls. Don't leave the theater. Then? Don't they, leave the theater because you may miss this. They have the balls <laughs> to suddenly Zachary Quinto is alive and albino now. <laughs> and then the Electri credits. Electricity turns you white. It's the metal. You... It's the metal on yes, the inside. see? And fuck you. How dare you assume I want to see a sequel to this? No, this is not. This is not even. I will buy this in the future for cheap. I. I no. This is not a movie that I will watch again. This is not a movie I will want to see a sequel to. I'm sorry. Um, I, again, I wasn't. I wasn't expecting anything out of this, and I'm not disappointed, but I am a little irritated because you had a lot of tools behind you, but um, we found out a nice little tidbit about the writer. Mm -hmm. Of the movie. Really? Really? You're gonna hire the guy who did the first Hitman, who did X Men Origins, and who did. Die Hard 5. Yeah. Yeah. Why would you do that to yourself? You set yourself up to fail. That explains everything. Yeah. So, in the end. We are going to give Hitman Agent 47 a 2.7 out of 5 Ninja Stars. If anything, if you're remotely interested in this, uh, I'd say rent it, but then you're still giving them money. Redbox it for a dollar. Uh, yeah. Wait till it comes on Netflix. This should have been a straight to, to DVD. Yeah, I, I would have praised it a little bit, actually. <laughs> I would have given it a little, I would have forgiven it a little bit more, you know. Oh, quick fun fact. Uh, she kept falling asleep. <laughs> Several times, <laughs> I went with two other buddies. The other buddy was just, you know, he enjoyed it a lot more than we did, because he's a little bit more forgiving, because he enjoys the games, um, which is fine. But the other guy I went with, I knew, I knew something. I knew it was a bad sign when I'm like this, and that guy is still like looking at his phone, checking the time, <laughs> like at least six times he's checking the phone. <laughs> 
And then proceeds to tell us afterwards if he had gone with his wife, he would have walked out 20 minutes into the film. Bam. And I would have <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> so let us know. Maybe we're all off topic here. Maybe we're crazy. You know, maybe you think, uh, well, yeah, we are crazy. But <laughs> maybe you thought this movie was freaking amazing, awesome. Please let us know why in the comments below. We're really interested. Or let us know if you completely hated this movie and why. Or if you just, meh. And if you enjoyed this video, hit that like, share, and subscribe button. And we'll see you next time. Where are you? Here. Spoiler time, huh? <laughs> ah, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Daddy, you don't get a say in this. <laughs>